want to join you and help you fulfill God's plan for your life. I feel this in my bones, people. For you, I'm feeling it. I'm telling you. We've got to display the ministry of the Spirit today. Something that is so incredibly powerful to change the world. We must not lose today's opportunity to reach the whole world for Jesus Christ. This is your love world. Hebrews 13 verse 15 By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. The unending praise is on. We've been on since 27th of March. So every half hour of every hour of every day, of every week, of every month, or offering praise to God. The Pastor Chris Life Unending Praise on 27th of March 2024 marks a historic 365 days of pure, relentless worship and praise dedicated to the Lord. As we continue counting the days, we celebrate the extraordinary journey of gratitude, worship, and unending praise. From the mountaintops to the city streets, from sunrise to sunset, millions of Christ Embassy churches, staff members, BLW campuses, teens, youths, children, and ministries all around the world are participating in offering praise to our Lord Jesus Christ. 365 days, 8,760 hours, 525,600 minutes, and 31 million 536,000 seconds of expressions of admiration, gratitude, and reverence to the Almighty God. Join the live stream on www.loveworldmusic.org and www.pastorchrislive.org to connect alongside millions of worshippers worldwide, allowing participation from anywhere and any time of the day. We are Eternally grateful to our man of God, Pastor Chris Uyakilame, DSC, DSC, DD, for this beautiful opportunity to continually offer the sacrifice of praise to our Lord. Hallelujah. Beautiful Savior, wonderful 
special. I'm surrounded by men and women of God who are in love with Jesus Christ and who long to see him have his perfect will in every area of your life. It's going to be a really, really bad day for the devil. We've already decreed that. We already know that. Jesus is going to be triumphant in every heart, every airway going out to every nation as love world touches. The presence of the Holy Spirit is moving through the airwaves. And whatever you're facing today, whatever trial you found yourself in, Whatever area of your life you're in, whether in your, your teens or your 20s or your 30s or you're way older or younger in between, Jesus has something for you today. And these men and women of God have been praying and asking the Holy Spirit to put a word in their mouth for you. So you're in the perfect will of God right now to be listening to the sound of my voice and to those that are about to come after me and share. Because this is a bad day for a devil. You for allowing us to be here today and to blend our anointings with yours as we help take this gospel of Jesus Christ to the literal ends of the earth. As I was thinking yesterday, I believe I mentioned it when I was preaching, Leonard Ravenhill once said to me before he died, he said, Mike, you who are left are going to have the greatest responsibility ever in finishing the Great Commission. But he said it's the greatest privilege. And we do have a great privilege. And we're, we're so thankful following our man of God's lead, gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. We've got some amazing people standing all around me here, and I want to introduce them. You know them very well, but we've got Bishop James Payne that's with us tonight. All right, Bishop, I know you're excited about tonight. Share yes, a tiny little bit about what we're going to be hearing from you in just a few minutes. The message that God's given me tonight is something that I... I have visited before, but it's a prophetic word, I believe, from God about what's getting ready to happen for the remnant of sowers yes. that are taking of their substance and spreading the gospel around the world. Amen, amen. And uh, I wouldn't miss it because I'm telling you something no. wonderful, something amazing is getting ready to happen. We're not going to miss it at all. Pastor it's Osei, it's always a privilege and an honor to be with you. Thank you so when much. I think about you, I think of many things, but I think about class and dignity yeah. and the anointing that you carry but i think of you because i know you are militant in your intercession and boy do we ever need that today i pray god multiplies your heart by the thousands all across the world raising up men and women who will be militant in their intercession like i know you are sometimes when i sit next to you in the studio and i hear you praying in tongues boy in lagos nigeria we're honored for that tonight and my dear friend from California, Bishop Clarence McClendon, we're going to be hearing from you tonight and share with us a little nugget because, boy, you're rich. Matter of fact, I have never told you this, but one time I was talking to Dr. Murdoch, and, 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 and we, we, you and I had been preaching somewhere together the week yeah. before, and he'd asked me, where have you been? And I said, I was out, and I was preaching with Bishop Clarence, and he said, I love so much his heart for studying and giving us the deep truths of God's word. Hallelujah. He paid you a great compliment that day, but we're honored you're here. Share with us. You'll be up first. Tell us what you're going to be ministering about tonight because we don't want to miss a word of it. Well, you know, la last night when we were here and the man got up and began to speak about the significance of Abraham praying for Abimelech, the yes. significance of Job being directed to pray for his friends and God literally directing them to have him pray. I was arrested by the significance of moments like these. Yes. You know, there's a story where a woman said concerning Elisha that she recognized that a holy man of God was literally. Yes. Yes. And I believe these times uh, that Pastor Chris and Pastor Benny have set aside are times where the anointing of God is passing by people for specific reasons and this is one of those seasons. So I'm going to yes. deal with that a little bit and the significance Please. of acting on a word spoken under the anointing of God. Praise God. Oh, yeah. that's so neat. I can't wait to hear that. Praise We're going to God. want to take notes and, and soak up every word. Pastor Kay, oh, it's an honor to be with you. 
I was listening to you pray two days ago too. You really played militantly in the Holy Ghost as well. You have a passion for people and a passion for souls, and it's real contagious. Would you greet the people and share something on your heart tonight and exhort us? Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Smalley. I just want to express my gratitude to my man of God, Pastor Craig, yes. for putting this together. Yeah. You know, when I think about the caliber of the men of God that are here and what they are sharing, what they already know, they don't have to share with people. They, they already know it. But for being gracious to put this together this whole week and what we have received in the past two days and today already, if that is all that we have done, it's more than enough. But to think that we're still going to have more. And by the time we get to Friday, it's going to be a whole new level. Oh, I believe the it. devil is in trouble, like you said. Faith to faith, glory to glory, isn't That's it? Right. I believe that. That's Praise right. God. Evangelist you. Eddie, you bless my heart every time I'm around you. Greet the family today, the Love World family all around the world, and share with us something the Lord's put on your heart. To our man of God, Pastor Chris, for putting this program together. It's a very special season, yeah. a glorious season for Everyone all around the world in the last three days has been from glory to glory, God's truth coming out. And last night, our man of God took out time to share with us on how to recognize uh, the power of God, the blessings that God has brought to us, how to connect, yes. and how to respond. Yes. And I want to encourage you, don't miss any moment. You get your phone, call someone right now. To be connected to this program. This is the program you need. This is the answer to your question. This is the solution to your problem. Whatever you desire, this is your moment. And God has you in mind for putting this program together. Tonight is your night and the subsequent nights. I know that tonight is going to be great. Oh, it's going to be powerful. I want us all together around the pulpit together. We're going to pray for you in just a second. And then we're going to go to a song with the Love World Singers. Then when we come back from that, Bishop Clarence McClendon is going to speak. But I want us all, if you recognize the similarity and the thread between what each of the folks just talked about, there was always something in it about the significance of timing and how God has brought people together and there's a now word you heard bishop talk about when the lord passes by and he's going to give you some deeper concepts on that in just a moment but it's timing it's timing now god's passing by now god has a right now word and we are to react to that and you there at your house whether you're watching on a traditional television set or whether you're in an airport watching on a handheld device Nicer. Maybe you're in a hotel watching on your computer. I don't know how the Holy Spirit's made it possible for you to hear this, but all of us feel the tangible presence of the Lord, which we mean and know God wants to take right through the airways, right to your listening device. Matter of fact, I want everybody at your house right now or wherever you're watching right now to take out your cell phone and text three people. Text three people. You could do it in 15 seconds. Just text three people. Tell them how to watch the program the way you're currently watching it. We can triple the audience just in a matter of seconds with all of us being internet missionaries. And you know more than three people that need a touch from God. You could share it on King's Chat. You could share it on your social media. Let's triple the audience, quadruple the audience, because we really are here to pour out the word of the Lord for your breakthrough. And as a matter of fact, the phone numbers are on the screen. We're talking about sowing seed this week. We're talking about giving God, the God who's given us everything, an offering that's precious to us and wrapping our faith around it and calling in that harvest. And even now, as we have the opening prayer and as the Love World singers begin to sing, you can pick up the phone. You could dial the number that's on the screen. You could schedule your harvest because when you sow a seed, you're scheduling a future harvest. Jesus said it best, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And then in Mark chapter 10, he talked about the 100-fold return. So you call, make your vow, make your pledge, and we're going to be here to pray for you tonight, to believe God for you. Whatever place in life you are, it's going higher from here in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. So, Father, we're so thankful tonight. Father, you told us that out of our innermost being would flow a river. And tonight, we stretch that over the airwaves. We decree breakthrough in every listener tonight. We decree salvation for the lost, healing for the sick, and the scheduling of a harvest for those who need it the most. Father, we're not going to negotiate with the Holy Spirit tonight.
We're not going to negotiate with the greatest giver in the universe. We're going to sow a seed tonight, wrap our faith around it, call in the harvest in the name of Jesus. We decree tonight's the worst night the devil's had in a long time, and it's a great night for us. For greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. I set myself on a covenant with you and all these standards next to me that tonight's your night for a breakthrough doesn't matter if you're watching live or you figure out you're watching months or weeks or years after this broadcast was made God wanted you and needed you to hear this message that's why you're listening right now which means what we say is for you and God's going to take you to a whole new level in Jesus name so you pick up the phone right now go to the phone while the love world singers sing and when we all come back together Bishop Clarence McClendon's going to take us deep in the word of the Lord. You're never going to be the same in Jesus' name. God bless you, love word singers. Thank you, Jesus.
Jesus. Salvation and glory. The greatest and highest power. How I'm wrapped up in your name. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands in the presence of the Lord. There is a glorious presence of God in this place. And I know that the same God who is present here with us is there with you. There is no time or distance in the realm of the Spirit. And so right there where you are, just take a moment and lift your hands and just lift your voice and just begin to worship God. Say things back to God that he has said about himself. That's worship. When you are saying to God something that he has said about himself, come on, open your mouth right there. Father, we bless you. Lord Jesus, we magnify you. We thank you that you are our righteousness and our peace. You are our healer and our provider. You are the God of heaven and earth. Thank you for your presence. It is your presence that distinguishes your people. Moses said from all the other people on the face of the earth, it is that your presence goes with us. Thank you for it. Thank you for the integrity of your word. And we thank you for the intelligent Holy Spirit who is with us and in us and for your people everywhere, for they are your inheritance in the earth. Grant us now that we might speak as the oracles of God to the heart of the matter, to the center of the things which concern your people, and we vow to give you all the praise and all the glory for everything done in your name and the people said amen in Jesus name come on clap your hands and bless the Lord one good time you may be seated love world singers thank you uh, love world musicians and thank God for our man of God Pastor Chris Oyakilome and certainly for Pastor Benny Hen and for the vision, for the stewardship of the grace of God that is upon their lives and for bringing this time together. I'm so honored always to be a part of this family, this Love World family, and to be uh, uh, allowed and permitted to take part in these great times of ministry, I don't take it lightly. I remember uh, Pastor Ose when I first came on the Love World grounds several years ago, and I came uh, by myself. Of course, some of my team came, but none of my family came. And I called back, and I said to them, you've got to come here. You've got to get on these grounds. I had been to... Lagos, Nigeria, many times. Love Lagos, beautiful city. But what I said is when you come into Love World, you have left Lagos. You are now in a manifestation of the kingdom of God on earth. And the people are so magnificent and such excellence, a reflection, of course, of the spirit of our man of God. But it is magnificent to see. And so I encourage everybody, whenever I might meet them. I said, listen, I, I hope, I, I pray you get to heaven. I pray I see you there. But if you don't get to heaven, at least get to love world. It'll help you on your way to heaven. Uh, I'm sure it'll help you get there. So uh, I, I pray that you are sensing the magnificence uh, that God has placed in our midst through what Pastor Chris and Pastor Benny are bringing us. I want to direct your attention uh, 
to a passage of Scripture, and I'm going to begin reading in Luke chapter number 4. So I want to go there, and I'm going to start reading in just a moment uh, at verse number 14 of Luke chapter number 4. But I, I want to preface the reading of the Word uh, by sharing with you that, that last night, I believe it was last night, when the man of God was here on this set, and he opened uh, the program last night, and he, he referenced a couple of scriptures. One was in Genesis chapter 20. The other was in Job chapter number 42. And in both of those passages of scripture, Bishop uh, Payne, the man of God brought out the significance of the instructions that were given to Abimelech, the king, in Genesis 20, and to Eliphaz, the Timonite, in Job 42. Because in both of those passages, Dr. Smalley, the man of God pointed out uh, that although God was talking and speaking directly to uh, Abimelech in one case, and, and Eliphaz in another, he instructed them to have a man of God pray for them. He told Abimelech when he was restoring uh, Abraham's wife to him, he said, I, I, I want you to restore, but I want you then to go and have Abraham pray for you, for he is a prophet and you shall live. He told Eliphaz the Temanite, even though he was not pleased with what he and his two friends had said about Job, he said, I'm going to have mercy on you if Job prays for you because he is my servant. And as the man of God was saying that, God bear me witness in the Holy Ghost. I was sitting right there where you are, Bishop Payne, and I sensed such a weight, Pastor K. Of glory, I, I, I mean it. I was, I was, I was overwhelmed, almost as if I had left the room, and, and it took me two or three minutes as to come back and to focus. And then last night, when I got uh, to my room, and early this morning, the Spirit of God kept dealing with me about the significance of that uh, statement and the significance of the point that the man of God was making. And the Lord said to me, he said, I do not want you to allow anyone to miss the significance of moments like this that are set aside when men and women of God under the anointing of God are being sent to you with words from God to break you through into different dimensions, to break you through into other realms of blessing and peace and prosperity and victory. If you're tracking me, say amen. And so I want to read now in Luke chapter 4. And so this was not one of the things I had planned to minister when I came here, but I heard the Lord very clearly today, and he said, go here. Look at Luke chapter 4 and verse number 14. Now this is, of course, after Jesus has received uh, the anointing, the Spirit of God has come up on him in the form of a dove, the Bible says, after he is baptized of John in the River Jordan. Then he goes into the wilderness and he uh, is fasting and praying 40 days and he is tempted of the adversary. Verse 14 says, then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee and news of him went out through all the surrounding region. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. Everybody say where he had been brought up. Say that. Where he had been brought up. That's an important detail. He came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue of, on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those that are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable 
year of the Lord or the year of Jubilee. Verse 20, then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down and the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed upon him. Stay with me. And he began to say to them today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So all bore witness to him and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is not this Joseph's son? Verse 23. He said to them, you will surely say this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself. I want to stop right there just a moment and remind you, depending upon the biblical chronology that you trace, Jesus has just now been baptized of John in the River Jordan. He has gone into the wilderness being tempted. He has acquainted himself with the anointing that has been placed upon his life. So when he comes out, he says, I'm not only anointed, I know why. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because, and most agree that this is really the beginning or the initiation of the earthly ministry of Jesus. He does no miracle until he is anointed of the Spirit of God, although he is the Son of God uh, from birth and before. He does no miracle. He, 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 he affects no significant ministry action, Dr. Smalley, until this happens. So after he has proclaimed uh, what uh, is read there, and we know it, to be Isaiah 61, the Bible says he closes the book and then he looks around and now he is talking about what he he knows, uh, Pastor Kay, the response of people are is going to be about him as he goes about his ministry responsibility. Listen to what he says. He says, he said to them, you will surely say this proverb to me, physician, heal yourself. Whatever you have heard done in Capernaum, whatever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in your country. Now, as of yet, Jesus hasn't done anything in Capernaum. He hasn't worked any miracles. That, are, you, are you with me? He, he hasn't gone there yet. He just received the anointing. This is the first act or the initiation of his ministry. So, so he is projecting into the future. He knows what's going to happen. He knows some things, uh, Evangelist Eddie, about how God is going to use him. And he says to these people who are familiar with him, remember, he's in his hometown. He's in his own place where he was brought up, and he says, you will surely say this proverb to me, physician, heal yourself, and whatever we have, we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in your country. Then he said, surely I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you truly, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah when the heaven was shut up Three years and six months. In other words, there were a whole lot of people in need. There were a lot of widows in that region when uh, this happened, that the heaven was shut up. Many widows, were there. When, the, when the heaven was shut up, three years and six months, and there was a great famine throughout the land, but to none of them was Elijah sent except to Zarephath in the region of Sidon to a woman who was a widow. Look, verse twenty-seven, and many lepers were in Israel. In the time of Elijah the prophet. In other words, there were many people that needed healing. There were many people that needed miracles in the time of Elisha 
the prophet, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. And I was reading this today, and the Spirit of the Lord, he began to speak in my spirit, and he said, Son, pay attention here to what Jesus is saying, and I want you to articulate this night as you minister to people whom I have purposed in this season to break through into new dimensions of blessing and release and favor and prosperity. He said, you will surely say this to me. I know that this is going to be something that is said to me. Uh, physician, heal yourself. In other words, do hear among your own people what we've heard of you doing elsewhere. Now, let's go to Matthew 8 real quickly and see one of the things that Jesus would, was going to do in Capernaum. Let's go there very quickly. Go to Matthew chapter 8. Verse number, Matthew chapter 8, verse number 5. And they said, I had a little time tonight, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it. Watch this. Matthew chapter 8, verse number 5. It says, now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented, and Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak a word only, or just speak a word, only speak a word. In other words, you don't have to come here. You don't have to come to my house. Just speak a word, and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this one, go, and he goes into another come, and he comes into my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled. And he said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great Finding yourself in the word of God, recognizing a word from God is for you. Recognizing that when God speaks through his word, by his spirit, by a man of God, that that word is for you and acting on it. Is the key to stepping in to the next dimension. It is, in fact, what Jesus himself had just done. I want you to pay attention. He had just come out of the wilderness. He had been fasting, the Bible says, 40 days and 40 nights. Uh, it is reasonable to believe, Pastor O.C., that he didn't have a scroll in the wilderness, that he wasn't studying scripture in the wilderness. We know he was schooled in scripture all through his life, but he was in the wilderness 40 days. But the Bible says when he comes out, he goes directly into the synagogue. And the Bible says he, he, he takes the scroll from the attendant and finds the place where it is written. We know it as Isaiah 61, but then it was on a scroll. He finds the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel of, to the poor, recover your sight to the blind, set at liberty them that are bruised. The Bible says then he closes the book, hands it back to the attendant, and says, this is about me. This was spoken about me. The prophet Isaiah was talking. About me. The Holy Spirit spoke a word 
that was about me. And when he recognized it was about him, he was released into another dimension. This is why Jesus begins to move here in the scripture to a whole nother dimension of reasoning and a whole nother dimension of articulation. Now watch this. Watch this. Then he said, verse 24, Surely I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own country, but I tell you truly, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah when the heaven was shut up three years and six months and there was a great famine, so there was great need. There was great lack throughout all the land, but to none of them was Elijah sent except to Zarephath. And where Elijah was sent with the word of God, that's where the miracle happened. Where Elijah was sent with the word and the anointing of God and somebody acted on the word, that's where supernatural things occurred. And so he deals with this subject of the prophetic and gives examples. Isn't it interesting? Isn't it interesting that in the two examples that Jesus gives here, he gives the example of the widow woman of Zarephath, who is of Tyre and Sidon, and then he gives the example of Naaman the Syrian, a leper, neither one of them are of the seed of Abraham. Neither, are you listening to me? Neither one of them are Jewish. If you study the scripture, you will find that there are two times in Scripture where Jesus is articulated as saying he saw great faith. Only twice does Jesus say, now he may have seen it elsewhere, but only twice does the word record that Jesus says he saw great faith. And in both instances where Jesus saw great faith, one was where I read to you just now, Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 through 13, the other is in Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. That woman was a Canaanite woman, Matthew says. In Mark's account, he says he was, she was a Syro-Phoenician woman. In both instances where Jesus says he saw great faith, he was not dealing with religious people. He was not dealing with people who had all the T's crossed and all the I's dotted. He was not dealing with religiously flawless people, but he was dealing with people who would hear a word and act on it. And that is why in times like this, God will reach into circumstances and situations. I'm speaking to some people, and you may think you're not worthy. You're not deserving. You haven't measured up. You haven't merited the goodness of God. I came to tell you that the goodness of God does not come to you because you earned it. The goodness of God comes to you by his grace, and when his anointing and his word comes to you, and you act on it, supernatural things begin to take place. Are you still in the room with me or what? And so Jesus looks at these and he says to them, you're going to say to me, you, you're going to say to me, do it here. Do it there. Do it here. And what you don't understand is it's not me alone that's doing it. It is somebody who is taking my word and believing it. And that is why at times like this, God will speak to somebody. And when they act on his word, supernatural things will happen. And other people who are religious and know it all and have all the I's dotted and all the T's crossed will say, well, I've heard that. Yeah, but are you acting on it? Are you acting on the word that is spoken to you? When these men of God come and speak under divine instruction, are you taking it as a word from God? Or are you just saying, well, that's just this one. Or that's just that one. Or that's just a No, 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 no. God has so inextricably tied himself to his servants. Let me, let me show you something. Go to Matthew chapter 40. I'm, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 10, verse 40. Matthew chapter 10 and verse number 40. Matthew chapter 10 and verse number 40. 
Jesus is speaking to men that he has sent to preach the gospel under his authority. Men to whom he will release his anointing and grace to preach the gospel. Listen to what he says. He says, he who receives you receives me. And he who receives me receives him who sent me. Now, who sent Jesus? The Father. So Jesus is saying, watch this. He's saying, he who receives you receives me. And he who receives me receives him that sent me. Jesus is saying, I have so inextricably tied myself to men and women that I send under the anointing of the Spirit, that if you reject them, there is a dimension of me you will not be. Some years ago, the story in Second Chronicles 20, 20 of when the people of Moab, Ammon, and Mount Seir, the people of Moab, Ammon, and Mount Seir have surrounded the children of Israel under the rule of Jehoshaphat the king. And when Jehoshaphat fasts and prays and the word of the Lord comes to them, the word of the Lord says, Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. And I was meditating in that, and it was as if the Spirit of the Lord arrested me and said, Son, pay attention. Don't miss this. I have just told you that there is no great prosperity that will come as a result of just believing in me alone. I know that sounds heretical. <laughs> but I've just told you that there are dimensions of prosperity that my people will never come into unless they learn to act on a word spoken by a man or a woman of God under the anointing of God. Then you're going to not have enough. You're going to lack because I send men and women with my word and, and women with my word and my word carries my anointing and my anointing carries everything that is required to change a situation. I'm almost done with this. Watch, watch this. This is powerful. He said, he who receives you receives me and he who receives me receives him who sent me. Look at verse 41. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. Now let me stop right here and say two things. Number one, when Jesus said he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet, he was not there distinguishing prophets from apostles, evangelists, pastors, and teachers because those ascension gifts or doma gifts had not been given to men yet. The Bible says those were given when he led captivity captive. When he ascended, he gave gifts to men. So when Jesus says here, he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet, he's not talking about the Ephesians 4.11 office of prophet. He is saying anyone who speaks under divine inspiration, anyone who I send with my word and anointing, no matter what office you think they're in, if the word of God is in their mouth and the spirit of God bears witness with your spirit, it is a key for you to break through. Watch this. Watch this. He says, he who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet. The, the word name there, it's an inter interesting Greek word. It is the Greek word anoma. It, it doesn't mean just he who receives the prophet and says, that's prophet so-and-so. No, no. It means he that receives a prophet in the 
name. The, the word literally means nature, character, and authority. He who receives a man or woman of God understanding. That this is not just somebody else who's talking. This is not just somebody with a degree. This is not just somebody who's been to Bible school. This is someone that God has called and anointed and sent. He said, when you receive him that way, you will receive a prophet's reward. What is a prophet's reward? It is his or her word coming to pass in your life. And that is why in the same service, in the same worship experience, in the same church, in the same praise-a-thon, there can be people listening to me or Dr. Avanzini or Bishop Payne, and they will hear it, and they'll say, well, that's nobody but Bishop Payne. That's nobody but Mike Smalley. That's nobody but Clarence McClendon, and nothing will happen. And someone else will recognize that's a man of God. That's a woman of God. That's the anointing of God. And when they act on it, supernatural things will break out. Why? Because they received the one that God sent in the authority that God has given them. If there is one thing I believe, Dr. Smalley, that the church in the West needs, it is the honor that is here in the continent of Africa for men and women of God. One of the reasons that great things are able to be accomplished years ago, he said, I'm going to start here. I'm going to send you to the African continent. It was 2000. He said, I'm going to send you to six nations in the African continent, to six nations in the African continent. And he did so. I never asked I didn't ask God to do it, but he said, I'm sending you. And, and, and Evangelist Eddie, about two or three years into that, I asked the Lord. I said, God, why are you sending me here? It's not that I don't want to go. I got plenty of work in the United States. Why are you sending me here? He said, son, there is something you need to see here because the West has sent missionaries and evangelists here. But in the coming years, this continent is going to be sending missionaries and evangelists to America. He says, because they have captured something that the church in the West has lost. And it is an honor for men and women who are sent from God. I'm not just minimizing the gifts, the graces, the callings. I have never met a man with such grace and stewardship and love as Pastor Chris Ayokolomi. But one of the reasons that great things are happening here is because he's surrounded by men like Evangelist Hetty and men like Pastor Kay and women like Pastor Jose and Pastor Diola and Reverend Tom and all of this family that is honoring the grace and the anointing and the endowment that has been placed in this man of God. Look at your neighbor and say, he'll be done yelling in just a minute. But I am telling you by the Spirit, there is something supernatural here. And that's why Jesus says this, watch this. And I'll never forget when the Lord showed this to me. He said, he who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And I was reading that, Pastor K. And the Spirit of God said, son, don't miss it. I'm talking about the same man. I'm not talking about two different people. I just told you that how you receive a man or woman has to do with the reward you get by acting on their word. And so what he's saying is, if two people are sitting in a congregation and one receives the one who is speaking as a prophet, they will get the reward of having heard a prophet. But if the person next to them is just hearing a righteous man, they will only get the reward of having heard a righteous man, not because the anointing was different, because the receiving was different. Because the perception was different. Watch this. And that's why he says, are you still tracking me? I'm almost done. That's why he says, and whoever gives one of these 
Oh, don't miss what I'm about to say because this will bless your life. He said, and whoever gives one of these little ones, one of my sons or daughters, I know it was a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple. Surely I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. What is God saying? Well, what he's actually saying is, he said, you can be the cup bearer. You can be, oh, you're not listening. You can be the adjutant to a man of God and prosper more than most preachers. You're not listening to me. You, you can be the cameraman in love world and be more prosperous than most bishops. Y'all aren't hearing me. You, it doesn't matter what your natural vocation is. It matters how you receive the men and women that I send to you. And if all you're doing is pouring water into the man of God's cup, but you know you're serving a man of God, you will break through into dimensions of prosperity that other people will be scratching their heads at. Are you in the room with me? Grab, grab your neighbor's hand and tell him it doesn't matter what your job is. Doesn't matter what your salary is. Doesn't matter what you're earning right now. What matters is how you receive the men and women God sends you with his word. I'm closing here. I'm I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. So, elabora shiki. God says, elabore ke shata. Elabore sande de bashi. Hebarise ka shota. Hebari ka sonda. Eshatere boso. There is somebody listening to me tonight. And this is your night for a breakthrough. This is your night for super. has announced this, the year of redemption. And one of the connotations of redemption is to be rescued from loss. Be rescued from loss. And I heard the Spirit of God say, tell them I'm sending a rescue operation today into circumstances and situations. I'm sending a rescue operation to get you out of whatever the enemy has tried to surround you with. I'm almost done. Lay your hand upon somebody over there in the choir. Lay your hand upon somebody here. If you're listening to me where you are and someone is near you, lay your hands on them. If you're by yourself, lift your hands in the presence of God. And so God says, in Amos 3 and 7, Hallelujah. Oh, I wish I had a body I could preach this in. Because as we come to the ends of the ages, you're going to see God's men and God's women ascend to the places of governmental authority that they have been ordained. We have thought that apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers were church positions. They are not church positions. They are governmental positions in the kingdom of God. And God's about to raise men and women up in nations. Pastor Chris is one of the first examples. God's about to raise men and women up in nations who will have greater authority than presidents. Greater authority than governors and mayors. Greater authority to determine I, I feel the anointing of God. Greater authority to determine what happens in cities and regions and nations than political power. Why? Because they will be received as men and women of governmental authority. I believe with all my heart, I believe with everything within me that one of the reasons God has raised this man of God and this ministry up is because it is a model of what he is going to do throughout the earth. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear. And you are stewarding a grace. The Spirit of God has purposed throughout the nations. And so God says in Amos 3 and 7, it says the Lord will do nothing in the earth except he first 
reveal his secrets to his servants, the prophets. Once again, when that word was spoken in Amos 3, 7, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, those were not in operation. He's talking, he's talking about anybody, whether you're an apostle, whether you're a prophet, whether you're a pastor, a teacher, if you have one of those governmental gifts, if you will say what God puts in your mouth, People will act on it. Supernatural things are going to take place. Miracles. Jesus was literally saying one of the keys to miracles and breakthroughs is not just how anointed the man or woman of God is that's preaching. It's how you perceive them and how you receive them. Now, there is no substitute for the anointing. If they're not anointed, forget it. But if they are anointed, then there's no limit to what you can receive. You got your hand on somebody? Just pray in the Holy Ghost about 60 seconds. I heard, I heard, I heard. I heard as clearly as I'm talking to you right now. I heard the Spirit of God say, tell them I'm sending rescue operations right now. I, I, the, I'm sending a rescue operation to your situation. I've dispatched angels on assignment to break you through. There is a rescue Operation sent to your situation, sent to your circumstance, sent to your environment tonight. I know it as surely as I'm standing here. And if you will receive this word and act on it, so there, there were many, there were many widows, but only one broke through because she acted on the word. Of a prophet. There were many lepers, many needed healing, but only one got healed because they acted on a word from God. And there are people listening to me. And your your friend, your brother, your sister may have been in a situation like yours. And it took them six years to get out. And you're gonna get out in the next six hours because you act on a word from God. You're facing a circumstance. And they've told you there's no way out, no way through. It'll take you three months to get out of this, a year to get out of this. And God says within 24 hours, within 48 hours, within 72 hours, I'm going to turn this thing around. If you will act on a word under the anointing, and I may not be sent to everybody tonight, but I am sent to you. I may not be everybody's flavor, but tonight I have come with a word out of the Spirit to tell you there's a rescue operation already on its way. And the Spirit of the Lord gave me an instruction. If you're listening to me, sir, if you're listening to me, ma'am, right now, right where you are, the Spirit of God told me to tell you that if you will take this moment and sow a seed into love world. Sow a seed into this ministry. Sow a seed to help Pastor Chris and Pastor Benny reach the world with the gospel. If you will take this instruction, doesn't matter what the situation. Somebody say there's a rescue operation on its way to my house, to my circumstance, to my situation. I want you to hear me now and hear me very clearly. My people miss this moment. When the glory of God came on my being when the man of God spoke, something hit me. Something hit me. And it stayed with me all night. The Spirit of God told me to come and tell you tonight to sow a seed, as many of you as can. I want you to get a seed and sow it of the equivalent of $1,000 U.S. There is no magic in the number. And God bear me witness in the Holy Ghost. I'm not trying to do anything except what I heard. But there is something about that level of giving tonight as a point of agreement that is going to cause something supernatural to be released in your circumstance. There's a rescue operation 
on its way to you. There are some of you listening to me, and you say, Bishop McClendon, if I had that, I would sow it, but I don't have that tonight. Some of you, God is bearing witness with you that you are one of those that are to sow it, and you may not have it all, but you need to sow and so on. There are others of you. That's just not your level of faith. You say, I would do it if I had it. That's not mine. The Bible says if there first be a willing heart, it is accepted. Not according to what a man has not, but according to what he has. So if you're not one of those, but you say, prophet of God, I've heard the word of God. And I'm going to act on this word. I want you right this moment, right this moment, I'm getting ready to pray. I want you right this moment to go to the phone and call one of our prayer ministers. Call them and let them know, I am acting on the word of the Lord, spoken under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And I got to say this and I got to say it out loud. As I was praying this afternoon, the Spirit of the Lord said to me, He said, Son, there will be five people watching you. Many of them are men and women of business. A couple of them are men of, and women of God. But he said there will be five. He, he literally said to me, he said, your voice is assigned to five people tonight who are to sow a seed into love world of $10,000. He said there are five that will be listening. A couple of you are businessmen. A couple of you are men and women of God. You're looking to expand your sphere of influence, your territory. One of you is buying property. Another of you is believing God to increase some things in television. There are business people watching me. And God told me this morning that he's going to break businesses and ideas and inspirations out this week. And the Spirit of the Lord said to me to tell them to go and make that seed sown into love world. For a couple of you, the word I just spoke to you is not even information. It's confirmation. And you've been waiting to hear, and now you've heard it. I'm going to pray. And as I get, as I pray, and the Love World singers come to sing and minister before the Lord, I want you to go and make the seed that the Spirit of God is placing on your heart. I know what I heard, and I don't miss. When God speaks to me, I do not miss. I know that voice. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, He said, your voice is assigned to five that are going to a $10,000 seed. He said, tell everyone who can to agree at that level. And he said, if they can't, then just tell them to do the very best they can. Would you, w w would you stretch your hands this way, men and women of God? W would you come and just stretch your hands this way with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray now for my brother, my sister. I pray for your son, your daughter who has heard your word. God, many of them have been looking for an answer. Many of them have been asking for a direction, a breakthrough, and you just sent them an instruction. And I set myself in agreement with them right now. In the name of Jesus, that the rescue operation that has been sent for them reaches its destination. In these days, and I decree miracles, miracles of promotion, miracles of elevation, miracles of finance, miracles of healing, miracles of restoration, miracles of supernatural breakthrough. I decree in the name of Jesus, I'm going to the phones. I'm going to pray with you. If the word of the Lord has come to you, don't let this moment pass you by. Come on, let's worship God. Let's worship God. Let's worship God just a moment. Can we do it? Can we do it? As we worship you, call that number on the screen. While we worship you, act on the Word of God. Something supernatural is on the other side of your act of believing tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Love World Singers.
Word of the, the word of the Lord has been delivered tonight. It's been a powerful word, a profound word. It's a life-altering word. And right now, I don't want to keep the, I want to just keep this flow going, and I don't want to do anything to stop it. So I'm looking in the camera right now. For those of you not yet have picked up the phone, this is your moment. You heard what the man of God said. You're bearing witness in your spirit that God's wanting you to take a step of faith. And I'm here just to confirm it for you. This, the, the figure that you've been hearing in your heart, the $1,000 seed, the five that are going to sow the $10,000 seed. I want to lay our hands in just a few minutes on your pledge form. So I want you to get off the sofa and call right now. Dial the number that's on the screen. If you'd like to sow, 
on the online system. All the information is on the bottom of your screen. It's safe. It's secure. You can sew online. All over the world right now, every one of us are like linking arms, walking in an altar call, spiritually speaking to the front of a church and responding to a word from the Lord. The Love World singers are going to sing here in just another moment. They're going to sing a song while you go to the phone. If you've tried to get through because they're locked up, they're, they're full right now. But if you call and you can't get through, wait about 30 seconds and call and a line will open up. We're praying for people very quickly. We want to be able to pray for you. I feel real stirred about two people. We're supposed to sow a $100,000 seed. One of you God's been dealing with all week and you haven't done it yet. Now's your time to call right now. Quickly call right now. Count off 100 days. Watch what God does in your ministry and in your business. Two people. It's not for everybody, but two are supposed to obey and plant a seed of $100,000. We've talked about the $1,000 seed, the $10,000 seed. Father, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, your sheep know your voice, and another they will not follow. There's not a disobedient person listening to the sound of my voice right now. Your sheep know the impression and the nudging that you've spoken to them, and they're moving right now to obey. But it might be funds we'd set aside for a different purchase or something we move from one account to the next. Father, it might be something we're putting on our bank card, but your sheep know your voice. I call in the harvest from these two seeds of $100,000. I call in the harvest for five that know they're supposed to sow a $10,000 seed and the hundreds of us that are sowing a $1,000 seed. Father, we swiftly go to the phone right now to create our harvest. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, it is done. Oh, come on, family. Pick up your phone right now. Get in on this. Be a part of this. God is moving here. Love World singers are going to sing. You're going to go to the phone. We're back in the phone room trying to pray with as many of you as we can. So call right now in Jesus' name. God bless you as you go to the phone.
The Holy Spirit's hovering over the airways. Pick up your phone right now. This is a, a holy moment. 
When God began to reveal to me, Pastor Osei, about his laws of financial prosperity in the scripture, I'd been raised that way, but when I began to see it and began to teach it and preach it as I traveled, I was shocked that the Holy Spirit moved just as powerfully in services when I talked about kingdom finance as when I preached on salvation because it's all His Word. And we've heard the Word of the Lord tonight. So you pick up the phone right now, dial them into some screen. If you've called and you couldn't get through, just wait 30 seconds. Even you're calling and you know, you're know you waiting and you're, it's a seat of patience God's going to honor. Wait about 30 seconds, call back again. Bishop McClendon, Bishop Payne are both in the phone room right now praying for as many of you personally. Pastor Titi's there, Reverend Ray, others are there, Evangelist Eddie. We want to pray for as many of you as we can, but it's just, you got to call now. The, the Holy Spirit's hovering over the airwaves. And what I've found when God nudges me about sowing a special seed is it's usually something that wants to sh- God wants to use to shift the seasons of my life and take me to a whole new beginning. If you negotiate with that moment and you think, oh, I'll do it tomorrow or I'll do it next week, something will happen in your life to break your focus, break your distraction. The grace that's on you to sow it will lift off. So if today God's given you a grace to sow a seed and you ignore that, you disobey, how do you know how quickly that grace will come back on you again? You were saying earlier when the man of God spoke here yes. in the pulpit, you were talking about something that was, you know, um, that tied everything together. Timing. 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 Now is the day. Now so is take, the time. Seize the moment. Yes. Seize the opportunity. Yes. This is your opportunity to have a shift. Yes. Not only in your finances, yes. but in everything that has yes. to do with your life. Listening to the man of God that spoke. That's I believe so there's good. so much grace. Yes. So much grace. And that's what uh, uh, the bishop was talking about today yes. when he was yes. talking about the grace yes. that is on the man of God, Pastor Chris. Yes. We are not just funding the gospel. Right. You know, this is not just a funding of the gospel. Yes. If you will put your seed where it counts, yes. if you will put your seed in this grace, if you will bankroll the gospel because of the grace that is on the man of God, yes. then you are sorted. Everything yes. about your life yes. is sorted. It's powerful. So I believe you when you say that. Oh, I, I believe it too. And I know it's in your heart. It's on our heart. It's on our man of God's heart. So go to the phone right now. Dial the number. It's on the screen. Many already have. And I, I thought you would love to read this first. And we've, Bishop felt stirred a moment ago. There were five. There may be more. But there's at least I, five I, I that God is talking I tell you there are more. You would like to yes. hear this. This is 10,000 U.S. dollars 10, from US dollars. Stanley, Nigeria. Whoa, this is Sister Jennifer from the U.K. She's sowing U.S. equivalent $4,110. Praise God for that. This is Brother Abolaji from the United States, $1,000. This is Michael. I like that name. He's sowing 2,000 U.S. dollars. This is Dickness being paid in Nigeria, $1,000. Here is uh, Margaret. She's from Ghana, and she's sowing a seed of $2,000 a day. God bless you, Margaret. Thank you so much for that. Here is Brother Mamaya from Italy, $1,000. Wow, that's Italy today. Praise God. Here's Benin, U.S., $2,000. This is from Sophia. Sophia, I just feel stirred. Glory, to stop me. The next seven days, the first part of your harvest is going to come through in the next seven days. Watch for it. Journal it. Hallelujah. Seven days from the day. Write the date down on the back of your Bible. This is Pastor Wilma from the United Kingdom, $1,100. Oh, that's so powerful. Listen, this. One thousand pounds. One thousand pounds. One thousand three hundred and seventy dollars. Oh, that's wonderful. And here is from Nigeria, Sister Oma. She's sowing one thousand dollars to the work of the Lord. Thousand dollars to the work of the Lord. So listen, right now, while the Holy Spirit's hovering over the airways, we're going to go to the Love World Singers one more time. Can this I is take your this moment. one? Yes, please. Here is do. Brother Julius Kamala, Uganda. Honda's in the 1, house. One thousand dollars seed. Bishop McClendon, we just had our first ten thousand dollars seed that we came in right now. And God is moving. And you've been back in the prayer room with Bishop Payne. We're going to let the Love Word singers sing one more song. I want you to go to the phone right now before Bishop Payne comes to share. And I can't even tell you how rich what Bishop McClendon spoke about was for the timing of this moment. So don't let these moments close with your hands closed. Delayed obedience, 
becomes disobedience. But when you let go of what's in your hand, God's principles say His Word begins to come back towards you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. So go to the phone right now. Dial the number that's on the screen. We'll be right back with Bishop Payne. Go now in Jesus' name. God bless you as Love World Singers go.
precious Jesus, there's a real anointing here. I want the musicians to keep playing. We're in the middle of a river right now. We're going to just stay with it. We're going to flow with it. I know you're sensing it right there how you're watching on your handheld device, your television screen. The word that the Lord put in Bishop McClendon's heart is not just a word for tonight. That's a right now concept, principle word for you for the rest of your life. I hope you caught it. It was so strong. It was delivered so wonderfully. But it's something the Holy Spirit, if you're listening, Jesus said over and over, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear. This was a word, a kingdom word. He, he was sharing with me here a minute ago. He had not premeditated sharing on that. That was something today the Holy Spirit said, change your plans and speak on this tonight. This was something that God wanted to deposit in you. You understand he already knew it. He didn't need it for himself. But God knew who would be watching tonight. He knew you and I would be listening. He knew you and I would be listening. And he put that word in our bishop's heart so he could say it for you. That's a kingdom concept word. Hallelujah. God is just moving. God is touching. Jesus said out of your innermost being would flow the river. Your miracle's not coming down. Your harvest isn't coming down. The scripture said, He is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, comma, according to the power that works within us. Your harvest isn't coming down. It's coming out. It comes, everything's in your born-again spirit. It's to be released. God gives you instructions through a man of God, and we, we respond. Get in covenant with God. And his principles and his laws pop. They work. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. The sensitivity of the Holy Spirit. He's, he's here right now. We won't rush this whole. This is a holy moment for you. This is a holy moment for you. There's a young married couple right now. You just got married in the last six months. And you've been praying for the last 20 minutes about going to the phone and sowing a seed. But the seed the Holy Spirit's been nudging you to sow is a scary seed. Every one of us on this platform understand that moment because God more than once has tapped us on the shoulder and said, trust me at this level. Trust me at this time. And, and with, with God's grace on our life, we're standing here today because we said yes to those moments. And part of the harvest from that obedience was being able to stand here today and love on you in the name of Jesus and stand with our man of God. So I'm asking you right now, pick up the phone right now. Dial the number that's on the screen. You can trust Jesus. You can trust his word. He'll never fail you. Any attempt you make to please God will never go unrewarded. There's a harvest on the other side of this seed. Quickly go to the phone right now. You can see all the information's on the bottom of the screen. You can call. You can sow online. Everything you need's right there. You just have to say yes. You just have to say it forever yes. Today is the poorest day you ever have to be the rest of your life. You have a Jehovah Jireh who delights. The Bible says he delights as a party in showing himself strong. On behalf of those whose hearts trust him. Go to the phone right now. Dial the number that's on the screen. Bishop, I felt stirred while you were all back in the room there that there were five people, in addition to what you'd mentioned, yeah. that there were five people that were supposed to sow a seed into Love World of $100,000. And the moment I spoke about it, you knew who you were. It's not for everybody, obviously, but there's five. There may be more than five, but I know there are five. And even now, even now, you know. There's one of you, I see it in my spirit, you're a man, and you're laughing right now because you're like, okay, Lord, I give up. You're going to the phone. God never talks to you about a seed unless he's got a harvest on his mind. And before Bishop James Payne comes to minister and release the word God's put on his heart tonight, and what a, what a gift he is to the body of Christ. He's one of my closest friends. We talk on the phone, I guess, probably every day. If it goes every two days, we're, we're somewhere international. We can't get to the phone, but this is a man with an anointing to move into your life by God's Spirit and take you to a whole new level. But we heard a powerful word a moment ago from Bishop McClendon. And I want you to pray for those that have already called, those who are still calling. And agree with me for those that are sowing the $100,000 seed. I feel like in the next 100 days, God's going to show off big in their life. And your word today was so powerful. It wasn't for not tonight. It was to be carried for the rest of our life. Believe the Lord God as prophets and so shall you prosper. Pray for us before Bishop Payne comes to deliver the word of God. Pray for those who are sowing their seed. Well, let me just say as Dr. Smalley is exhorting, if you are one of those, don't miss this moment. Don't miss this moment. The Spirit of God said 
that the rescue operation has already been released. And I'm telling you, miracles are breaking out everywhere. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we set ourselves in agreement. And we remind you, sir, that you said that if any two of us shall agree as touching anything that they ask, it shall be done for them by the Father in heaven. And so we agree now that every individual who has sown the miracle, the breakthrough, the rescue operation is already released and we count it done. For those that are sowing even now, we decree the blessing of increase and favor miracles. For those that are sowing that $10,000 seed in this, Dr. Smalley was inspired five, sowing a $100,000 seed and my spirit bears witness. Maybe it is over a, a period of time. But in the name of Jesus, if that's you and you know it's you, you need to call and say, I'm the one, and start sowing on it as God gives it to yes. you. Now, Father, in Jesus' name, yes. we count this done. Yes. And we praise you tonight. And I just, I just sense in my spirit that the angels are already on assignments. All the angels that have earth assignments yes. connected to this people under the sound of our voice of to bring seed to the sower and harvest and breakthrough. We release your ministry to them. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Go to the phone right now. Reach for the phone right now. It's a holy moment. Don't miss it. Go to the phone right now. Our love world musicians and band keep playing under the direction of Bishop Payne. Bishop Payne, we love you, we honor you, and we are ready to receive the word of the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's just worship the Lord. Let's just worship the Lord. Worship the Lord.
Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Thank you so much, choir. God bless you. The Lord spoke to me on Monday night when the choir was singing that the love world music was setting. That you're not anointed just heavily by the Holy Spirit. And these musicians, same thing. Thank you so much for, thank you so much for your gift that God has given you and taking us in the presence of God. Uh, I think about Saul when he would call for David, and as he played, the devil had to leave the temple. And that's the way it is here. Oppressions lift off people as you sing and you minister around the world. Sicknesses lift off people when you minister and sing to the Lord. You can be seated if you like. I know you've been standing a long time. We've been in a real heavy, sovereign move of God here uh, for the last uh, hour and a half or so. And Bishop, thank you for that on-time word from God. I, 
it really moved me in my, in my spirit. It wasn't just a, a message. It was a message right off the throne of God. And, uh, this, I had a similar thing happen the last time I was here in the month of February 2023. I had, a, had an audience for an hour or so with our dear man of God, Pastor Chris, and he began to, under the Spirit, speak some things into my life that literally ignited in me what God was getting ready to do in the next phase of my life. And I left, and, and Nigeria is my second home. It really is. And I get homesick to come here and, and be in the presence of God and see some of my friends. But I was born in America, and I love our country. And I've been a Christian 54 years. And I have to say this. Uh, Nigeria has, and I think Bishop it could, could confirm this, uh, Nigeria has what we had in America 50 years ago the honor for men of God and the honor for the presence of God, but somehow we've lost that. And as you were ministering tonight, I began to pray, God, bring that back to our country. Thank God for Pastor Chris and Love World and, and what this, I tell Pastor Chris all the time, I say, Pastor Chris, you don't realize, maybe you do, but your word is holding back the powers of darkness and it's changing the world God has given him insight that no one on this planet has. In 2019, had it not been for his voice, in 2019 through 2020, in what uh, this man-made pandemic, I don't know where we'd be now, but Pastor Kiss kept speaking and prophesying under the anointing of God, and it was pushing back the powers of hell that wanted to take over. And so... I thank God for everyone that's been on the phone tonight. We've been in the prayer room every time, and I'm sure it happened with you, uh, Bishop, when we pray for somebody, the Holy Ghost that's here would come on them right where they are, and they just begin to pray in the Spirit, and, and, and God would move there. And uh, I know Bishop never intended to preach what he preached tonight. God put it in his heart. I didn't intend to preach what I'm preaching tonight because I've preached it before, but the Lord said, you're to preach it again tonight in a little bit different way. Right after I had my audience with Pastor Chris, I met a man of God that did not know who I was. And he confirmed what Pastor Chris had said to me uh, two or three weeks prior. And so I wrote it down in my prayer journal. And here's what he said to me. And remember what Bishop Clarence said tonight. If you hear his word, you'll be established. But if you hear his prophets, you will prosper. Now, here's what this man of God said to me. I have seen every day, every hour, and every year you have labored for my kingdom. I have seen every seed that you have sown. Because you have been generous and not selfish, because you have used your gift to spread my word around the world by encouraging my children to sow and teaching them the principles of the harvest. In this season of your life, I will trust you. And I never heard this, read it in Scripture, never heard what he said here, but Pastor Chris said it to me weeks before. He said, I will trust you with a grace overflow. That grace overflow will bring you into uncommon favor, supernatural provision, and divine overflow. And if those I send you to will follow the instructions that I give you to lead them in, I will cause them to walk in in that grace overflow, and I will cause them to experience what you have experienced. Now,
watched a preacher on television because there was no Christian television when I got saved 54 years ago. And I went to church on a, and I went to church on a Sunday night, and we had a prophet, and the prophet was receiving an offering to go to Haiti to, for a crusade, and I was working a job making $52 a week. My tithe was $5.20. I had a wife and a son. I got married when I was 17. And my late wife and I were married 47 years and had two wonderful children. And I had saved up $20 out of my $52 to buy my son and wife a Christmas gift. And the prophet said, some of you are sitting here tonight with $20 in your pocket. I, I didn't know how he knew that, Brother Clarence. I do now understand because I, sometimes when I'm preaching to a church or on television, the Lord will show me somebody that's watching just like Brother Mike and Brother Clarence a moment ago and what they're supposed to do. He was telling me what I was supposed to do to change my life. And he said, you're sitting here with $20 in, in your pocket, and I put it way down in my pocket because I, I, I didn't want to give it. I, I was not a cheerful giver, and I didn't know anything about giving. So I took the $20 out and walked down there and just threw it at him and started back to my seat. And he said, young man, come here. And I went back and stood in front of that prophet, and here's what he said, young man, your ministry and never preached a sermon. I now have 3,000 plus copyrights of music that I have written. I've had, 90, I've had 99 number one songs that I've written. I've preached on every Christian television network in the world, and here I am tonight on the greatest Christian network in the world, Love World, because I believe the words of the prophet. I said, I believe the words of the prophet. It's important that you believe the words of the prophet. The enemy will always try to make you skeptical of the prophet. When God speaks to you about giving, the devil will step in and say, they're just after your money. The devil is a liar. John 8, says he's a liar. The prophet said, your ministry and your music will go around the world. I did two things. I went to my pastor, and I said, I'm ready to preach. He said, that's great. We need an outreach ministry. He said, there's a Piggly Wiggly grocery store right down here, and I want you down there every Saturday morning preaching. I said, could I borrow a Bible? I didn't have the money to buy one. And all I'd ever heard in church was sermons on hell. And it was a big green dumpster there in front of the Piggly Wiggly grocery store. And I climbed up on it every Saturday morning, whether it was raining, whether it was snowing or whatever. And everybody came to get groceries. When they got out of their car, I would jump up on that dumpster and say, you're going to hell. Every one of you going to hell. That's all I knew. I didn't know the love of God. I just knew the judgment of God but I was doing what the prophet told me to do. Are you listening to me? See, some people have had a word from God, and God instructed them that he wanted to change their life, but they wait for the second prophet, and then they wait for the third prophet, and then they wait for the fourth prophet, and then they're too old for the prophet, and they never get what God has for them and never do what God wants them to do. I felt if I was supposed to preach, I didn't have time to go to Bible college. I just started preaching. I got on the dumpster and and I started preaching and people get out of the car and run in the grocery store to get away from me because I said you're going to hell they would come out with a cart and run to the car but do you know uh, Pastor K in that first year I went and got me some index cards to fill out when people got saved and at that dumpster I led 1200 people to Jesus in 12 months I led 1200 people to Jesus at the dumpster 
because the prophet said your ministry will go around the world. Some of those that were saved are in the ministry today and pastoring churches. Are you still here? I'm telling you, I saved up money and bought me a guitar because he said I, my music was going around the world, so I said I better get me something to play. And I learned how to play guitar, and I started writing songs, and my first song that was released went to number two in the gospel charts around the world. Come on, are you still here. Why? The prophet said that I would prosper and I believed what the prophet said and I acted on the word of the prophet. You know, God, even though you may not be qualified, I was not. I, I didn't know how to play. I didn't know how to sing. I didn't know how to preach, but I knew how to obey. The prophet said, God, your ministry and your music's going to go around the world. I stand here flat-footed, toe-to-toe, nose-to-nose, shoulder-to-shoulder with a devil to tell him tonight that the prophet its word come to pass. 54 years later, I'm preaching the gospel and writing songs that are going around the world. If you listen to the prophet, you will prosper. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If I were to title what I want to talk to you about tonight, it would be this. Get ready for the overflow. Look at somebody in the choir, either in front or behind, and say, get ready for the overflow. Grace, how important grace is. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, for by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourself, it's a gift of God to, self, it's a gift of God to every man. The grace of God. But I want to go to two or three other scriptures. Uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 12, or, or verse 2. I want to read that verse. It said, by whom we have access by faith into the grace wherein we stand. By faith in the grace. When the prophet spoke over my life, God released grace over my life. But it took faith to access that grace. What is grace? Grace is divine favor of God. It is divine enablement from God. That's what grace is. Grace takes you to a level that you would never go to in your own talent or your own gift. And that's what a lot of people in songwriters and musicians and singers don't understand. It's why they are great singers, they're great musicians, but they're not great obeyers, and, and, and so while they have the talent, God's grace has not touched the talent and given them favor, and by grace, we access that favor. That's why I am where I am. I didn't have the talent. I didn't have the ability. I didn't have, you know, the benefit of being raised in a preacher's home and being brought up by a preacher. All I had was a word from the prophet, but it's been pretty good. Glory to God. A lot of people went to Bible college and never did what I've done. Glory to God. A lot of people that have a lot more talent than me have never done what I've done. Why? I believe the words of the prophet. I operated on the words of the prophet, and by faith, I have access in to the grace wherein I stand. I know who I am. I know what I possess. I walk in the grace of God. Overflow is coming. I said overflow is coming. There's a grace overflow getting ready to happen. God's church to the remnant that's standing. There's getting ready to be grace on your life. There's getting ready to be an overflow of grace on your life. You're about to have ability you didn't have before. You're about to have favor you didn't have before. You're about to have endorsement you didn't have before. You're about to have anointing you didn't have before. You're about to have prosperity you never had before. You're about to have breakthrough you never had before. You're about to have God open doors that have never been opened before because by faith you access the grace of God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Let me, let me go on in, in Romans chapter 5, verse 17. Romans chapter 5, verse 17. I want you to hear this. It, it said, For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive the abundance of grace. The abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life. 
Come on. That didn't, that didn't say that we're going to be run over in life. It said we're going to reign in life. How are we, how we going to reign in life? We're going to reign in life by the grace that's overflowed in our life and brought righteousness in our life, and we're going to reign. Are you ready to reign in life? Are you ready? I said, are you ready to reign in life? Are you ready to walk into a room and have the whole atmosphere change because you're there? Are you ready? Come on. I said, are you ready for God to say, I, that's my child. I'm going to use that child. The one thing that amazes me about Pastor Benny and Pastor Chris is the humility these two men have because they recognize that the gift of God has brought them to this place and the grace of God has brought them to this place. And that's what Pastor Chris made me understand, that the reason I'm able to do what I do is because of the grace and the gift that God has put on my life because he saw my faithfulness. Amen? Now, I go to places and I, I'm used of God to speak and prophesy into people's lives in the area of finance. I, I went to a church. I'm going to tell you two or three things here, and then I'm going to read another scripture. But I went to this church. The pastor called me, and he said, my church is in trouble. And he said, uh, I don't know you, but somebody told me that if I would call you, you would come, and God would turn our church around. He said, we built a new church. We got a $750,000 mortgage, and we can't make the mortgage payment because a lot of our people during the problems in the world have been transferred out or lost their jobs, and we're about to lose our church. And my t as I'm talking to him, I said this, and, and sometimes the Holy Ghost said, come on, your brother, brother Kay, and, and you'll say something, and then you'll get home and say, oh, Lord, did I say that? And on the phone, I said, well, when I leave your church, it'll be paid off. <laughs> and then I hung up, and then I started dreading going to the church because I didn't know if it was me or the Holy Ghost. Have you ever been there, Bishop, when you, you, you know, I wanted the church to be paid off so bad, I thought maybe I, maybe I just said it. But I got there, and I preached, and they received an offering for me instead of me receiving an offering for them. He said, I want you just to get introduced to my people, and you can come back, but we want to give you an offering. And he gave me an offering. It wasn't a big offering, but it was, a, it was an offering. And we're standing out in the lobby, we're, and, we're, and we're talking, and I'm thinking, Lord, you said that when I left this church, it'd be paid off. I'm, th I'm not even hearing what the pastor's saying. And this little lady walks up. And she says, Pastor, I'm visiting today, and I really enjoyed the service. And just a few months back, my husband died and left me $20 million, and it's over here in the bank, and it's not doing anybody any good. And if you'll meet me over there in the morning, I'll, I'll write you a check, and we'll pay this mortgage off. Come on. Are you anybody shouting now? I said, anybody shouting now? Come on, what brought that? The grace that's on my life. The grace of God that caused me to speak and prophesy. He believed what I said. And that lady walked up in one second, it was over. One second, it was done. I was in Missouri. I preached a revival there. Before I left there, I said, this church... I said, we still got five days. Will you believe God with me? He said, I'll believe God with you. I, I don't want to reschedule. The fourth day before the fourth day before I, I was to go, a lawyer walked into his office and said, I represent the estate of so-and-so. She was in a revival with some evangelist last year, and she really got blessed because her husband had died, and the church loved on her, and she wants me to find out how much you owe because that preacher said this church will be paid off before he come back. I know he's coming back in a couple of days, and I want to get it paid off before he gets here. Could you shout with me? Come on. Could you shout with me? They believe the word of the prophet. I said they believe the word of the prophet and the church was paid off. Then she turned around and bought them a hundred. Of God. Now, I have up till uh, December of, of 2023, I had paid off, I had paid off 97 church mortgages. Because 29 years ago, a man by the name of Dr. John Avanzini called me to his room off the platform of TBN. 
knelt down by his bed. He laid hands on me, and he prophesied over me. He said, God is going to use you to raise money for the kingdom of God. I never had raised money before that time, but the prophet spoke. And God began to show me things in Scripture about seed time and harvest that I'd never seen in my life. I, I was preaching in Louisiana, and on, it was on a morning session. We had about 800 people there. And I'm in this church, and the Holy Ghost comes on me, and I said, Pastor, how much do you owe on this building? He didn't even know. He had to send his secretary to find out. She went to the office, come back with the paper, said, here's how much we owe. In five minutes, Bishop Clarence, that church was paid off. That was the first one. In five minutes, the, the debt was eliminated. Why? Because God's got plenty of money, and God's got people that's got money, and God can put those people in the right place at the right time to do the right thing to get the right thing done. Come on, somebody ought to shout. Come on. That was the first one. But it took me now almost 28 years to get 97 paid off. But the man of God said that I would begin to walk in a different grace, an overflow of grace. Since January 1, we paid three off, making 100. And since January, come on, what used to take years now is only taking a month or so. Ha! Come on. I was at a church in January. I got in a spirit on a Tuesday night. I prophesied this church will be paid off this year. And they had a church in Kentucky that needed a building. I prophesied. I said, the, the, the church that needs a building in Kentucky, they'll have their building by the end of the year. I handed out some envelopes. I prayed over the envelopes. I said, I'm leaving here tomorrow, but next week you're going to bring your offering. And it's going to be the biggest offering you ever bought. It's going to be enough to pay this church off and be enough to get that building. And that offering was $1.7 million. The pastor called me on Sunday afternoon and said, we got enough to pay our mortgage off and get a building for that church there, somebody ought to help me praise the Lord. I'm talking about believing the word of the prophet. Overflow is coming. Hallelujah. Overflow is coming. Watch this. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. And every man hath received the gift. Even so, minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. That word manifold there has several different meanings. One is varied. Another is various forms. Another is divine endowment. Another is many-sided. We all receive grace in a different measure. I have the grace to pray for people's finances. And if they'll believe, I'll prophesy debt-free in their life. And if they'll believe, God will supernaturally bring them out of debt. A pastor had a $90,000 hospital bill down in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Him and his wife couldn't pay it. The, the hospital would not discount it. And I prayed for him and I prophesied. I said, before I see you again, that bill will be paid in full. It'll be totally paid. I didn't know how God was going to do it. The next week, the hospital called and canceled the whole bill and wrote it off. Why? Because a prophet spoke. Oh, Brother Payne, I don't know if I, I believe that. Well, let me give you one from the Bible. There's a widow in 1 Kings 17, and she's down to her last meal, and her son and her are getting ready to eat their last meal and have a funeral. They're getting ready to die because it's the middle of famine. But down there by the brook, there's a prophet. And God spoke to the prophet. It's a five-day journey from Cherith over to Zarephath. And it took five days for Elijah to get to the widow's house. She had five-day supply when God spoke to her, and she had one-day supply when the prophet got there. I don't like that part about how the Lord works. I wish he'd come when I got five days. But a lot of times he don't show up until the last day. But aren't you glad that he's always on time and he ain't never late? Some of y'all, you've been waiting a while. Some of y'all in the audience, y'all listen to me. 
me right now and you've been waiting a while. You sowed two telethons ago, but you still hadn't got your harvest. Don't get discouraged. I'm telling you, overflow is coming. Glory to God. I said overflow is coming. God has not forgot your seed. God is going to bless your seed. God is going to send somebody in your life. I believe it's right now. There's something about this moment that lets me know it's right now. God is doing something right now. This is not just another telethon. This has been ordained by God. Right now, God is getting ready to move for your life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You know, when a prophet of God stands in this pulpit, looks in that camera and says, the Lord's saying to me right now, there's something, there's somebody that God is talking to to do something. And I know, I know that I know God talks to people when we say that. And you're not resisting me. You're not resisting Bishop. You're not resisting any of these men and women of God on this platform. What you're doing is resisting God that is speaking through these servants to you. The widow had to make a decision. Y'all. I wouldn't preach on sowing. I wouldn't preach on, on harvest. Because, you know, I saw all the junk and people using it for their own self-benefit, you know, and, 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 you know, and, and, and prosperity has little to do with you. God's going to bless you and you're going to live a good life, but prosperity has to do with a kingdom. You know why I'm still out here preaching at 75 years of age? You know why I'm not going home and retiring and getting me a rocking chair? Because I like to sow. And if I keep preaching, people keep sowing in me, and I keep sowing into the kingdom. And they keep sowing into me, and I keep sowing in the kingdom. And if I'm 85 or 88 or 95 or, you know, whatever, as long as I got a breath, as long as I got a pulse, I got a purpose. Hallelujah. And I'm going to keep preaching the gospel, and I'm going to keep sowing. I'm going to keep doing my God wants me, you know why? Because I was 19 years old, a hopeless drug addict on my third overdose of drugs, laying in a hospital bed, covered up with a sheet, pronounced dead, and left for the undertaker. And Jesus walked in that room and pulled that sheet back and touched me on my right foot. And he said to me before the prophet said, he said, I'm going to raise you up and you're going to carry the gospel around the world. I owe something to God. I owe something to Jesus. Hallelujah. I owe something to the body of Christ. And I'm going to preach as long as I got bread and an opportunity, I'm going to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hey! I wish I was younger. I could get excited more. I used to run in church, Pastor Osei. Now I have to get me a designated runner. I used to dance. Now I got a designated dancer. Hallelujah. Now, I, 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 I just want to take a few more moments with you if I can. Uh, uh, glory to God. Mm, thank you, Jesus. In 2 Corinthians 9, 8, in the NET version of the Bible, the NET version of the Bible, it says this, and God is able to send a grace overflow. That word overflow there means <laughs> extending beyond every boundary. <laughs> that word overflow there means extending beyond all limitations. That word there means breaking through every barrier. Whew. Extending beyond every boundary. Exceeding every limitation and breaking through every barrier. You know, I've preached in places that I thought I would never preach, but I extended beyond and broke through every barrier. I was preaching, uh, you may not understand this in Nigeria, but in America where I come from, we've got de denominations like Baptists and Methodists and Catholics and Episcopalians and Presbyterians. I don't know if y'all have that here or not, but we've got that there. It divides all the sheep up so you know what you are. 
and I got invited to a Baptist church. And the thing about this Baptist church, they don't speak in tongues and pray for the sick. But I got invited there because of my music. They wanted to hear me sing. Well, I'm praying about the service that night, and the Lord said, go down to the store tonight and get the biggest bottle of oil you can find and anoint everybody that's sick. I said, Lord, they don't do that at that church. I talked to the pastor. I said, this is what the Lord did. He said, oh, God. He grabbed his chest. He said, oh, God. He said, he said uh, the head deacon of our movement's going to be here tonight. And, and, and he had a political office. Let me see what it was. He was over all the jails and all the crime in that area. I forget what his office was, but that's what he did. And he came that night, and he was a big guy like this, and the whole time I preached, here's what he done. So after I preached, I said, I got that big bottle of oil, set it up on top of the pulpit. I said, I'm going to pray for everybody that's sick. I bowed my head and prayed, and a, a line formed, and guess who was in the front of the line? And here he stood. And I didn't get just a little oil. I got a whole handful of oil like, like, you know, and I just slapped it on his head. And he shot his hands up in the air and he started shouting, glory to God. And I prayed for him. The people in back, we didn't have enough to cover them up or catch Nobody caught, could catch them. They just fell, you know. And, and so uh, they were laying everywhere and and, and the pastor, boy, he was so nervous. He was pacing the platform, man. He, he was just concerned, man. He was just worried. Oh, God, what am I going to do now, you know? And, and, uh, and, and, and what, how am I going to explain this? And, uh, and so he called me the next morning. I had one more night with him. I thought he called to cancel me that last night with him. But he said, uh, he said I got a call from this man this morning. And he said he's been a diabetic his whole life, but he got up to check his sugar this morning, and he said it's normal. He went to his doctor. The doctor said it's normal. He said God healed that man last night. Hallelujah. I got to church that night. Two buses rolled up. Armed guards got out. It was, it was two buses full of prisoners. He had all the prisoners in that county in those two buses. They came in with armed guards set in this row over here, about 300 of them sitting over here. They listened to me preach the gospel. When I gave the altar call, not one seat was, was left. They all came that night and gave their heart and life to Jesus Christ. Why? Because God told me to do something, and I did what God told me to do. You'll be surprised when God speaks to you. And of overflow. Luke chapter 5, when he told Peter where the fish was, he didn't just give him enough for dinner. His nets broke. Why? He's there. His nets broke. Why? He's a God of overflow. I said he's the God of overflow. I said he's the God of overflow. In Psalms chapter 23, it said uh, that uh, the Lord anoints my head with oil and my cup, what? It runs over because God is a God of overflow. Joel chapter 2, it says in the last days, the latter rain and the former rain will come in one month and the vats will overflow with new wine and the barns will burst out, amen, with new grain. Why? Because God is the God of overflow. Let me tell you something. In John chapter 10, he said that he would give us rivers of living water, and this spake he of the Spirit. Let me tell you something. God is a God of overflow. Ephesians 3.20 said that he's able to do exceedingly. 20 said that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly. All we ask or think, God is a God of overflow. Do you have enough? I said, do you have enough? Do you want to overflow? I said, do you have enough? Do you want overflow? Are you satisfied where you are? If so, you'll always be there. Or tonight you can get hungry and you say, my God is a God of overflow. God's going to put his grace on me by my faith, by my listening to the Word of God, following instruction. God is going to put grace on me, and I'm going to overflow in my life. I'm going to overflow spiritually. I'm going to overflow, hallelujah, financially. I'm going to overflow, oh, glory to God, in everything that I touch. 
God is a God of overflow. I'm preaching a lot better than y'all shouting. Praise God. He's a God of overflow. Second thing that I know is I was designed for overflow. <laughs> I was not designed to live with just a little bit or just to get by. I was designed for overflow. Amen. I've never had a prophet come to me and say, Thus saith the Lord, you're just to have a little bit. You're not supposed to overflow. God's not going to bless you. You're never going to be prosperous. You're never going to see your dreams come to pass. If I did, I would walk away from that so-called prophet because he is a liar. But I've had many prophets come to me and people that didn't even call themselves prophets and say the Lord's going to bless you. I had a prophet recently say God's going to add years to your life so you can continue to carry this message around the world. So you know something? I got to live. I can't die right now because a prophet said God was going to add years to my life so I don't have time to die right now. You're going to have to put up with me for a little while longer because there's a prophetic word keeping me alive alive. Somebody said when I got to, to Nigeria, three people said, you look younger. I walked away smiling. That prophet said, he's going to add years to my life. God must have turned the calendar back. God must have reversed it a little bit and gave me some more time. You see, I believe prophets. I'm designed for overflow. Glory to God. I'm designed. When God in Genesis 1 was creating. He said, be fruitful and multiply. I can't multiply if I don't overflow. <laughs> I can't be fruitful if I don't overflow. <laughs> I can't replenish if I don't overflow. I can't subdue if I don't overflow. I can't have dominion if I don't overflow. I was designed for overflow. And I'm going to close with this. Say it again with me. Overflow is coming. Say it again. Overflow is coming. Bishop, you said something Monday night I never heard that really resonated with my spirit when you said God can bless you without sowing, but you can't be a blessing without sowing. The reason God wants you to overflow is because until you overflow, you never affect anyone else. There's a religious teaching that you're just to have, believe God for enough. You're supposed to believe God for overflow. Have you ever been to church and you were going through some things and, and you were kind of heavy, you know, and you just couldn't really get into the service, you know, and, and you sat down on the row with somebody that was overflowing? Have you ever done that? And all of a sudden they start overflowing and, Pretty soon the burden on you starts lifting off of you and you start saying, well, I don't feel as bad as I did when I came in here. And pretty soon you're, you're being touched. That's why I like to come to telethons. When these men and women of God get up here and preach, oh, man, I start overflowing. I see them overflowing and, and, and I want to take the microphone and just preach myself because I'm feeling their overflow. Come on, amen. But you see, you don't have to live in somebody else's overflow. You can have your own overflow where when you walk in, people are affected by you. When you walk in, the whole atmosphere begins to change. Come on, people know you're, you know, I, I can tell you this, I know this by being around men of God. And, and Brother Clarence will say this, we could be at TBN, and, and, I, and I wouldn't even see Paul and Jan Krause, but I knew they were in the building. I, am, am I right? And I can tell you, I'll be right here. And if Pastor Chris comes in this building, I know without ever seeing him, I feel his overflow. Glory to God. I, I, I was at the hotel, and I didn't even know he was walking down the hall, but I felt the overflow. I tell you, we all ought to overflow where we affect other people's life. Come on, if you don't overflow financially, you're never going to impress people with the ability that God has.
enough people running around in the world today that are depressed, oppressed, defeated. It's time that God's children stood up and realized who they are. I'm a child that realize who they are. I'm a child of God saved by grace. I access abundance of grace through the faith that I have in God. There's a prophetic word spoken over my life, and I will not have anything less than what God said I could have because I believe the prophet. Sometimes it may not even be in God's plan or God's agenda, but when a prophet says it, God changes it. God never told Elijah to shut up heaven. Elijah just got mad at the sin and said, it's not going to rain. And God said, hey, let me change this thing. It's about time we started prophesying to people. I prophesied to everybody on the phones tonight I prayed for. I prophesied increase. I prophesied abundance. I prophesied they're coming out of debt. I prophesied of this choir right now. Listen, God is not going to ever overlook one minute or hour you spent practicing or singing for the glory of God. You're on God's list. God's going to bless you. God's going to prosper you. God is going to meet every one of your needs. You hear what I'm saying? Come on. Sometimes you may feel overlooked. You may feel unappreciated, but God sees everything. And if you just keep on showing up and you just keep on singing for him, one of these days you're going to come come in and say, I can't believe what God's doing in my life. I can't believe what's happening in my life. Hallelujah. I prophesy to these musicians. Glory to God, you could be using your talent somewhere else, but you're using it for the glory of God. I prophesy God is going to bless you. He's going to prosper you. He's going to open doors for you. He's going to make a way for you. Why? Because he sees your dedication to the glory of God. Believe his prophets and you'll prosper. Believe his prophet. Tell somebody right now, you watch it. Overflow's coming. Overflow's coming. The prophet said it was coming, and it's coming. Glory to God. Oh, glory. Choir, get ready. Musicians, get ready. Let me talk to you a moment. Come. Maybe you're there tonight. You're struggling. You need a breakthrough. I've been where you are. I felt what you feel right now. When my wife passed away ten and a half years ago, I didn't want to go on, Brother Jay. 47 years, I woke up with that woman every day when I was not on the road, and most of the time she went with me. I was so oppressed and depressed, I just cried all the time. And Brother Jesse Duplantis invited me down to his pastor's conference there in Louisiana. I'll never forget this long as I live. And I'm sitting there, and my heart's broken. <laughs> I can't hardly tell this. And Brother Jesse said, Brother Payne, would you stand? I stood up. And Brother Jesse said to all these preachers, he said, this man is one of the greatest songwriters in America. He said he recently lost his wife. And then Brother Jesse said, God's going to bring a young woman in your life. <laughs> and that young woman is going to stand by you and be your helpmate. He said, now, you're not ready to receive this right now, but I'm telling you, God's going to bring this young woman in your life. I'm married to that young woman now. I said, I'm married to that young woman right now. She's young. She's beautiful. Sweet, kind. Prayed with me today on the phone. Prayed with me last night on the phone. She's watching the program probably tonight. Last time I was here, Pastor Chris called, had me called, and he prayed for my wife over the phone. God healed her over the phone while Pastor Chris prayed for her. She gave me a new reason to live. You want to know why I look young? I'm married to a young woman. Brother Jesse said, it's a young woman. She's 19 years younger than me. If he hadn't said that, I wouldn't even look that, that way. But Jesse said, it's going to be a young woman. And, and that's what I, if I was going to get married again, that's what I want to marry a young woman. I don't want to marry an old woman, you know. There's nothing wrong with old women, just, you know. 
They can't take care of me when I'm old, so I get me a young woman. What I'm telling you is the, the goodness of God, the word of the prophet. I believe, Brother Jesse, that night, and everywhere I went, I'd look at the crowd, and I'd say, I wonder if that's her, you know. <laughs> Is that her, <laughs> you know? <laughs> That'll work, you know. Uh, and and uh, I didn't even have to be led by the Spirit. I could just say, you know, that, Lord, that one's all right, you know. And, but Lord had, had somebody hundreds of miles away in a state that I had never been to. And that's the one God brought. You think God don't care about your needs? There are people watching me right now, and, and, and you struggle financially. And I can relate to that. I struggled for years. But God found a, a young man who gave his last $20 to a prophet. God brought me out of over a million, $200,000 worth of debt in 12 months, paid off everybody I owed. The last 35 years, I've been debt-free. My ministry's debt-free. And God can do the same thing for you. There's prayer partners back by the phones right now. The phones, I apologize if you called and got a busy signal, but the phones are just, just lit up. Now, I want to prophesy to you. I said this yesterday, and the Lord brought it back to my mind tonight. There's 100 people right now, and you've been giving $1,000 in each telethon. The Lord said, He's talking to you to double that, to move up to $2,000. dollar seed or the Clarence spoke to people about a ten thousand dollar seed there's some of you that God has not there's some of you that God has not spoken to you a certain amount but you know you're supposed to do something right now I want to pray that you would get up from where you are get the phone in your hand or go to your computer and get online and don't resist the word of the prophet one more moment Get up, and as you're going to the phone or the computer, say, listen, I'm believing the word of the prophet, and from this day forward, there'll never be another day when I don't have a seed to sow. There'll never be another day when I live in lack because God's going to bring me out. Now, if you'll believe that word, God will bring it to pass in your life just like he brought it to pass in my life. Father, hundreds and thousands around the world are listening to me right now in Europe and Australia Uganda and other parts of the world, they're listening to me. Some in the U.S. at this hour is listening to me. And, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I prophesy to them that this is their moment. This is their moment to change everything with a seed. That seed is going to connect them with the blessing of a prophet, a prophet that prophesies increase and prosperity and supernatural debt cancellation. That prophet that has a proven record for the last 48 years around the world as being a man of God that can pray for the needs of people and God will meet it. So now you have a choice to make. You can resist the word of the prophet or you can respond to the word of the prophet. But the prophecy that was given to me, if I would believe the word of the prophet, I'd have uncommon favor, supernatural prosperity and God will do those same things in your life and divine favor and if you'll go to that phone right now the next few months and years you'll walk in uncommon favor you'll walk in supernatural provision why don't you get up off the couch or get up even out of the bed or wherever you're listening, go to the phone right now. I'm going to go to the phone. I'm going to turn the service back to Dr. Smalley in a moment. He'll carry the service from that point. But I'm going to the phone room, and I want to pray and prophesy over you as you call and sow. Do it right now in the name of Jesus. Brother Smalley, come tonight. Thank you for allowing me to come and just minister the gospel. An overflow of grace is coming. Yes. Tell somebody overflow is coming do you believe that you can be overwhelmed today and overflow tomorrow you can be overcome tonight and overflow tomorrow 
overflow is coming. Get ready. Get ready. You're about to overflow. God bless you. God bless you. Bishop Payne, what a powerful, powerful word. We receive that in the name of the Lord. Thank you for imparting that into us. Bishop Payne's about to go into the prayer room right now. I want you to reach for the phone right now. Dial the number that's on the screen. He'll want to pray for as many of you as he possibly can. The Love World singers are about to sing. And this is your moment to go to the phone. This is not the moment to think about something. This is not the moment to negotiate with something. And only a fool negotiates with God because he's a giver. You have to be a fool to negotiate with a giver, somebody who just wants to give you everything. So this is your divine moment to, as the Holy Spirit's nudging you right now. As the Holy Spirit's hovering over the airways, go to the phone right now. Dial the number that's on the screen. Bishop Payne wants to pray with as many of you as he possibly can. There's also information on the bottom of the screen of how you can sow through the security and the convenience of the online method. If you want to call, you can call. If you want to sow online, you can sow online. All the information's there, whatever nation you're watching from. Go to the phone right now. Father, we release the harvest. We sanctify the seeds of your family. And we call in from the north, the south, the east, and the west their harvest. I set myself into agreement, Father, that there's no selfish person listening to my voice right now. Your sheep know your voice and will say a forever yes to the prompting you're giving us in our heart. And as Bishop Payne said, we'll wrap our faith around this word and call in this grace anointing. We will receive our harvest, a hundredfold return, according to Mark 10, 28, and according to our faith and obedience. In Jesus' precious name, it is done. Come on, let's go to the phone right now. Dial the number that's on the screen. We're going to be there to pray with you and agree with you. Love World Singers, take us out tonight in Jesus' name. God bless you. Go to the phone right now.
Bishop, so many precious people are calling right now. They're on the phone scheduling their harvest, and we've got some amazing pledges to read. Look at what's coming from all over the world sowing their seed today. Isn't it glorious? And as we're reading, you keep calling. Here is Sister Blessing from the U.S., $10,000 seed. $10, Hallelujah. Seed. This is one. I don't know if she wants us to read her name or not. <laughs> well, you, you do what you want to do with This that. is one of our precious staff members sowing a $10,000 seed $10, tonight. $10,000. Here's Light Embassy from the United States sowing a $5,000 wow. seed. Wow, praise God. Here's Sister Claire Marie from the United Arab Emirates, $10,000 U.S. dollars. Praise, praise God. Praise God. People are responding. Praise God, yes. Here's South Africa. You can read that one. This one is, oh, wow, this is from uh, Bethuel. 13,369 U.S. dollars for their seed, for their harvest. God bless you. Thank you so much for that. How incredible. Here's Tamisho from South Africa, uh, $23,000 U.S. Wow, 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 wow. Isn't that awesome? 23,000 U.S. dollars. Sister Rebecca, $1,000 United States money. I've got Pamela right here in the United States. She's sowing a seed for $1,000. Praise God. Here's from South Africa, another Bethuel. Uh, Praise God. 200,000 uh, in, in uh, South African money. money. That's $13,369. Praise, Praise God. Praise Can you believe that? God. Praise God. Here's awesome. one. Awesome. This is uh, Romaine from the United States. Sowing a seed of $900. And while we're reading these, you can still call. If you've called before and you couldn't get through, wait about 30 seconds. Call again. Praise Even God. your persistence is a seed that God will honor. And, Bishop, I'm going to have you pray over these in just a moment. Let's just read a couple of more. And, and I love people that are sowing the seed of obedience at whatever level they can whatever right now tonight. So this important. is a, a pastor from Nigeria who's sowing. 690 U.S. dollars. Here's candy from the United States, sowing 2,148 U.S. Oh, dollars. Praise, praise God. God. Our prayer counselors are standing by. You can keep calling. Bishop Payne is there to take your call to pray for you. We are believing God for great things in your life as you sow your seed and wrap your faith around it, calling in your harvest. Bishop, pray over us in these seeds tonight. Father, in Jesus' name, we set ourselves in agreement with every sower. And we remind you, sir, of your word. You said you'd give seed to the sower, yes. multiply the seed sown, increase the fruit of their righteousness. And we declare again, a rescue operation is on the way. On behalf of Pastor Chris and Pastor Benny, be blessed be in blessed. Jesus' name. God bless you. Go to the phone right now. Thank you.